So as at the making of this uh, recording, um, the news is out that Unreal Engine has acquired Twinmotion, the software Twinmotion, which is the software very similar to Lumion. So it was always Lumion and Twinmotion. Incredible software used by architects to create visualization of, uh, you know, from buildings to moving cars, uh, walking people, interiors, everything. It is, it is brilliant. It's like taking Unreal Engine with all of its power and giving the, the ease of use of drag and drop and literally you're moving sliders to create all the, the visual elements. So the model there, for those who don't know, is that the, the model is created outside of um, Twinmotion or outside of Lumion, it's brought across and inside the software it's then textured, the lighting is added and different assets are added to it and you then can create like rain and wind blowing etc. So it's, it's brilliant for that purpose and quick turnaround time for architects. So I got excited about it uh, since I did a video on how to render, you know, SketchUp models inside Unreal Engine. Uh, a while ago um, I went to look at it and then I had that same sort of um, feeling that I had way back then that I was trying to move in that direction is that the the visuals uh, are appealing but they're not close to photorealism so understandably at the moment Unreal Engine is busy introducing ray tracing and it will naturally permeate through to twin motion which i think also um, sort of busy with uh, ray tracing so the quality is going to be increasing along the way and you're going to have this real-time experience but where i felt the disconnect was that i prim primarily use two pieces of software one is sketchup i use that most of the time and then cinema 4d when I need to do any organic shapes or any other sort of particle explosions or stuff like that. Uh, but most of my work for the type of clients that I have is from SketchUp. So I don't do big architectural designs, I do concept work. Um, not in the line of concepts of products as such, but if a client comes and wants to show another client an idea that they have and they want to place it in a mall or a... Um, an airport and show how it will work and how the possible branding would look like or in, in some cases it is a gaming company who wants to show how their setup would be uh, at an expo so I'll design the layout put the branding on give them a, a kind of look and feel and for me putting it inside um, SketchUp and working with it is the optimal tool because it's it's quick turnaround and, and you can create the mock-up so quickly but then when you move it out of that and you have to take it to a unreal or a twin motion or lumion you're then sitting in that ecosystem and and there's for me there's a little bit of a disconnect i like to work inside sketchup see how it's going to look tweak it see the possible outcome and then when i'm happy with it from inside sketchup just drive the process of making a a walkthrough video or an executable that can be handed to the client um, or even if you're showing the client while you're busy working with it you can give them a, a preview of it that is is close to you know photorealism maybe not at photorealism yet because it depends on the, the amount of power you have on your machine and I still found that although I got excited about twin motion and the partnership I still found it's just like there's just that that bit dis disconnect so what am I using and what am I going to be focusing my energy on previously I used to use Thea render because it was brilliant it worked as if it belonged to SketchUp you could render in the viewport and see things you didn't have to have this pop-out screen if you didn't want to but in the same way there was a program called Inkscape so some of you might have come across it um, Inkscape is a new player in the game or recently and what they did was bring along a, a program that gave you a real-time preview of what was happening so you could set the quality of it according to what you want so it gave you a little pop-up window like this now this window disappears if I click inside the SketchUp model or move it around uh, so I use a little thing called desk pins you can download it 
look for it on the internet it's free and then you take the pin and you it comes up in your panel here and you can click it and then pin the screen so I pin the screen so it stays on top um, because this thing is being recorded if you had two monitors you just shift this this preview onto the other one and make it full size and you have the luxury of having it in full quality now the reason why I've adopted Enscape and why I'm excited about sticking with it and not moving over to to Unreal or Twin Motion or Lumion um, is because as I'm working I can get my preview in the window if I tweak things I see it immediately and it's not just about adding assets it's about creating the objects it is about modeling the objects I can have a, a quick workaround yeah so for me this gives me that real true feeling of, of working inside SketchUp and I think if SketchUp ever had to design a render engine this is how it would feel it would feel like Enscape is it just feels seamless uh, maybe getting around working with the materials and so forth is, is something that you might sort of have to just adapt but it really reads all the SketchUp materials and it interprets things in the same way got a lot of powerful features so as at the recording I'm I'm on version 2.5 I think 2.6 is coming out with uh, ray tracing that is going to use the power of RTX and Nvidia cards and all that sort of thing I don't have a RTX card I've got a Nvidia 940 and an Intel i7 and it runs pretty smooth on this even with fly-throughs, I'll show you the video fly-throughs. You create it in a, in a micro portion of what it would take if you had to use a Theorender, a V-Ray, or a Arnold, or those stuff. Those things take forever to create uh, the renders. And for my purposes, these visuals are more than uh, enough for what the client wants. It's not photorealism, but it's also not that... Uh, that semi flat looking thing if you want to make it look more photorealistic you just spend a little bit more time with the materials there's tons of flexibility so that's the reason why i stay with the sketchup ecosystem and the inscape because like you see here as i'm moving around here i'm having a real-time preview and if i had the second screen visible to you you'd see it literally coming up like this on the second screen and if I navigate around, you'll have it going and it refreshes and clears up. Um, now what you're seeing here is not the final render and there's still a little bit of noise on the screen, quite a bit of noise, but that's going to clear up with the render. So once you click render, it, it's then dedicated time to clear up. Uh, these materials here, like this area that I'm busy doing for the client, doesn't have any sort of fancy textures on or material properties I've just sort of put it together for this purpose but if we if we look here at at these styles let me just move this across if you look at these styles here when it starts to render and, and clear up a little bit you'll see here that it's got a bit of a bump map now the bump map comes from the actual albedo image so the tile image is pulled into Enscape you tell Enscape use that image to create a bump map and then you can adjust the bump map and use that image to create either a roughness map or, or add roughness or smoothness to the object itself. Okay, these windows here are basically photos that I just put in there. If I wanted to make it more realistic, I could create a little bit of extrusions and add properties, but it's just an image that's thrown here for purpose of context. But if you look here, it's it's brilliant reflections. If you spend time with the material, you can get excellent quality. As you notice, this uh, stanchions here are very grainy um, because I haven't added much properties to them, so they pick up the grain. But when you render it, they render perfectly clear. Uh, I'll show you a render too. And a render takes literally 15 to 20 seconds okay so um, this is why I, I love this environment and the company is busy developing at breakneck speed to put in new features and just facilitate everything from assets to editing material features to oh, there's tons of it lighting everything it, it's it's quite brilliant so if I have to 
if I have to kind of look at it, I would say this is a kind of uh, program that would be what Twinmotion or Lumion is on its own with the models. It is bringing that uh, ecosystem, it's bringing that kind of uh, features into SketchUp itself. It's, it's making it like SketchUp is, is now have, has its own render engine and it's just feeling that smooth. I, I've got high hopes for it. So, you know, if you're an architect, you know, go the Lumion and go, especially now with uh, Twin Motion, go that direction because you can create cities with cars driving and people walking all over and wind blowing through trees. And that's brilliant. But for my purpose, quick turnaround time, intuitive working inside SketchUp, getting the renders and, and the fly throughs. There's nothing that can beat Inkscape. I really love it. So um, I can render an image, create a standalone executable, create a upload to a web that I send a link to somebody. So it doesn't matter what platform they on, they can still navigate through the model and then do 360s, VR, all of those things that are commonplace with many of these uh, render, render spaces nowadays. See, this for example is, is the wooden area, uh, which is above this. So I just created this, this sort of context so that I could do a demo on this area, this little turquoise box here. This was for the client. Um, so I created this here and then instead of leaving it bare, I put these, uh, actually these were stanchions with the ropes in between and I just took the ropes away and put a, a pole through. But look at the beautiful um, metal textures that we get here. And if I have to do a render here now, you'll see that the quality would be so much nicer even. Okay, so we're having real-time feedback. We're working inside SketchUp and I have full control over lighting and everything. Let me show you here, if I just go into the render window, I can move the sun um, sort of almost exactly like you have in, in the Unreal Engine, the Twin Motion, the Lumion, same setups. You can move the suns around, but it's all within the SketchUp ecosystem. And that's why this is the software of my choice that I use. So Enscape has got me sold for, you know, next next period coming ahead, next few years. Um, I thought I would be enticed by Twin Motion with Unreal, but it, it's not so much the ability to render and to create the visuals as much as it is the, the intuitive working space. I love the working space. It just, it just gels for me. Um, so yeah, that's much of a muchness there. So let me just show you, uh, I was going to show you this, that if I if I generated a render from this area here. So I'd go, let me just make sure that we have a, say a full HD quality image. We're gonna do that as a, as a shot, a screen grab. I am going to take you to, let's see. Um, okay, it's taking a while to open there. I'm gonna just take you to the pictures folder so that we can see as the render happens. So we in the pictures folder, I'm going to click um, just to make the single image that I've got in the viewport. I'm going to click and it's going to render. I'm going to just see that I don't have any other pictures there. So I'll just call the Z, ZZ so we can see it right at the bottom of the folder when we open it. So I've clicked that now. Uh, oh, here's a video that I want to show you also that I just ran earlier. Um, so I clicked it, it probably take 10, 15 seconds and that image will be rendered and you'll be able to see the quality. Again, if I have to render an image inside Unreal or um, Twin Motion, it, it, it doesn't, it will take almost what I'm seeing in the, in the visual element and not clean up and denoise as much yet. It probably can do it with a lot of settings, but yeah, I'm just talking about the simplicity. Okay, so this was about 15 seconds. So if I double click this, you'll see the, the image has cleaned up quite a bit with the render. So it takes this image exactly as it is and then starts to clean up the, look at this, beautiful. Isn't that beautiful? This um, bump map here has been created from the actual 
albedo texture. So there's no, you didn't take it out and create bump maps and reflection maps. You just, you just click the button and then it created its own, which you could tweak further. But look at this, this beautiful textures, lovely lighting, everything. I simply love the program. Um, and can you imagine when they come out with the next few versions that it's able to do additional ray tracing and all that. It's just going to be next level. And the bonus is, is that we are working inside SketchUp. I'm not leaving SketchUp. I am still inside SketchUp for this. Okay, so I am going to play this video. Um, okay, there we go. So this was the video I generated. Pretty much that's, that's the smooth move. And literally in a few minutes it did this. As I say, if we look at the reflections on the tiles, it looks beautiful. If we add properties to the other materials, we can get more realistic materials. If we look at these stanchions, you can see they're beautiful and clear. There's no noise on them. So the render clears up the noises and gets things ready for production. And if you want to make it totally realistic, just, you know, spend time with your lighting, spend time with your textures, and you pretty much can get it close to, I would say, close to photorealism. Um, it is quite awesome. Okay. And once you get into Enscape and you feel the fluid uh, editing with it and the movement, I doubt you'd want to move. So um, my encouragement is get Enscape, get familiar with it, and increase the community of Enscape. The more we do it, the more the company will be supportive of it. You don't want uh, this excellent tool not to be available to everybody. Okay, so hopefully that has given you sort of some insights. Um, so have a fantastic day and God bless.